Hello, welcome to the Concept 10 Teacher Talk. So let's do some factoring. Factoring is just a process. So remember the flow chart that you have in your notes. The very first thing you ask yourself is do I have a greatest common factor? On this first problem, we do. We can divide each of these terms by two and an x. So we factor that out front, we open a parentheses, and put what we have left when we divide that two x out. Then we look at how many terms we have left in our, parenthes in our parentheses, two terms. Um, we ask ourselves, is this a difference of squares? It's not, x is not being squared. So we go ahead and since we're solving, set each of these equal to zero and solve. So we divide by two and get zero and then add our four and get zero. On our next problem, we're gonna start in just the exact same place. We're gonna look for a greatest common factor. 3 will divide into both of these, so we're going to factor it out front, and we're left with x squared minus 16. Now, within our parentheses, we have two terms, and it is a difference of squares. So I'll write just below, this is an x that's being squared, and this is a 4 that's being squared to get 16. So when you recognize that, we're going to bring down our 3, and then we factor x squared minus 16 as x minus 4 times x plus 4. So that's completely factored. Now to solve, we can divide our 3 away and then set both of these equal to 0. So we'll add the 4 over and subtract it. So our two answers are 4 and negative 4. Let's keep going. So notice on the next problem that we do not have everything on one side of the equal sign. So let's add the 24 over and have this set equal to zero. Now, believe it or not, we do have a greatest common factor of three. So factor it out to the front, put what you have left when we divide out three. So five x squared minus 14 x plus eight. Within our parentheses, we have three terms. So let's do the quadratic factoring. I'm gonna identify my a, b, and c. So I'm looking for two numbers that I multiply to get a times c, which is 40, and combine to get negative 14. Well, I know that four and 10 can multiply to get 40, and if I make them both neg negative, I will still get 40, and if I add them, I get negative 14. So now I'm gonna ignore my three out front for a minute, and I'm just gonna finish factoring this quadratic. I'm going to split up my middle term using negative four x and negative 10 x plus eight. Then I'm gonna group the first two and the last two terms together by drawing a short dividing line. I can factor out an x and I'm left with five x minus four. I can factor out a negative two and I'm left with five x minus four. Now I've got a common expression of five x minus four which I'm going to factor to the front. And when I divide that out, I am left with x minus two. I'm going to bring down my 3, so there I have it completely factored. Now to solve, I can divide my 3 away and then set each of these equal to 0. So I'm going to add my 4 and divide by 5, so my first answer is 4 fifths, and then I will add my 2. So my second answer is positive 2. All right, finally the last one. So it's good to go. Let's just factor out a 2 greatest common factor. Always start looking for a greatest common factor. Now we're looking for numbers that will multiply to give us a times c, which is negative 6, and combine to give us our b value, which is 5. So let's see, if I do 6 and 1 and I make that a negative, that will work. Now I'm going to show you a little shortcut that will work each time. If your a value, which I just marked in, I'll put it in red, is 1, once you find your two numbers, you can place those numbers, I'm going to bring my 2 down, in two smaller parentheses. With, in this case, since we need to get x squared, it'll be x and an x. So x plus 6 and an x minus 1 equal 0. Now to solve, just like we've been dividing by the 3, we'll divide by 2 and then set each of these equal to 0 to solve. I'm going to go ahead and erase this factoring, so I've got some space there. x minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to subtract my 6, add my 1, so my solutions are negative 6 and positive 1. 
All right, that concludes um, the teacher talk for Concept 10. Make sure that you use that flow chart um, to help you work through what you need to do first and then next in factoring, and you can use it on any quiz and test.